This is the video for uh, the week ending uh, Friday, 12-6-2019. Uh, this is an introduction and a little bit of a description in the introduction of what this channel will be about. I'm going to put these slides uh, before every video, at the beginning of every video. Uh, for those that are brand new, they don't have to go searching for an introduction or anything like that. We'll go ahead and get started. What is this channel about? This channel is a video diary of my quantitative investment model. I do not reveal the inner workings of my model nor the cycles within the model, but hopefully some of my thoughts and my ideas can help as you build uh, your own quantitative investment model. What is the reason, reason for keeping a video diary? Number one, it's to document the holdings of the model. Uh, I will update that at the end of every week. Uh, number two, it's to force myself to be proactive in the data collection and the performance studies that are needed to verify model outperformance. So basically to not be lazy. It's easy to have just a laptop and data and not be as detail oriented as you uh, need to be since you're only really doing it for yourself. This forces me to do it for a YouTube channel which forces me to not be lazy in that. Uh, number three, to energize my performance by forcing myself to keep a schedule in order to keep this diary up to date. And number four, it's to stir up different ideas and thoughts. As I uh, put these videos together, my goal is to um, come up with other ideas that I wouldn't have, uh, have uh, come up with because uh, um, of not doing the channel. What does my model consist of? My model consists of a series of four cycles. It's really three cycles with the fourth cycle. Um, with the fourth cycle, monitoring the other three cycles. Um, these four cycles take into account the interactions of a, the interaction of a defensive universe of ETFs versus a higher risk universe of ETFs with economic and uh, economic data and sentiment figures playing a supportive role. How are these cycles set up? Cycle A, B, and C, so cycles A, B, and C are basically uh, a rating system for defensive uh, ETFs and higher risk ETFs and the responses to uh, sentiment and economic data. Cycle D is a series of indicators looking for strength and weakness of, of A, B, and C cycles. So think about A and B cycles are, um, uh, they are portfolios within themselves. So A is a portfolio, B is a portfolio, and C is a portfolio. And within those portfolios, it's a rating system holding, um, holding certain ETFs um, and uh, creates basically a chart. Cycle D analyzes that, those charts. Why cycles? The market is a series of cycles. Cycles can be short, they can be long, they can give head fakes. The key is figuring out the tells, kind of like a poker player. Um, figuring out the tells of the market so you know which, which cycles and when to be in a cycle or out of a cycle. Moving from a weakening cycle into a strengthening cycle is the goal. What are my model's goals? So the goal, the goals, the two goals of my model models is number one, when the S&P 500 has a negative day, the model outperforms it. This does not mean that the model is positive when the S&P 500 is negative. Um, this just means that when the S&P 500 goes down, the, uh, the, the, my models uh, outperform it. They do not go down as much and maybe even sometimes maybe even pull out a small gain but really the goal is to outperform every day the S&P 500 goes down my model outperforms it and number two on a rolling 15 day trading period the model outperforms the S&P 500 in up periods and in down periods next I want to talk about diversification we hear diversification and how important it is, and it is very important. But sometimes diversification 
does not take into account everything that it should take into account. I'm sure most of you have seen Jim Cramer play his game called I Am I Diversified, where people call in and, and give them a few stocks, gives them a few stocks, and he lets them know if they're diversified or not. Most time, here's an example, most times someone uh, gives the following example. I own Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, Amgen, um, uh, Amazon, and they own Morgan Stanley. And he'll respond that they are diversified just because those five stocks are a technology, a consumer staple, a pharma, a financial, and an online retail. And, in all, and, in, and since they're not all centered around one sector, he'll give them a thumbs up and say that they are diversified. But what is true diversification? Diversification is not just about weightings in other sectors. True, it helps with drawdowns and growth, but it does not do enough to give you true outperformance with minimal drawdown. Here, I, I, have, I pretty much put diversification into seven and, and I'm going down in order so the least diversified to the most diversified you can really most people will talk about it in um, in these in, in this way so like number seven if you talk to somebody who maybe is not involved in the market as much maybe they just have a 401k and an IRA they're going to tell you they're diversified as long as they're diversified across multiple sectors. So like my Jim Cramer uh, call-in show example. So number seven is diversified across multiple sector sectors. Uh, number six is now we're going to take it a little step further being more diversified but it still doesn't go far enough but number six is diversified across multiple, sec multiple sectors and small, mid, and large caps are represented. That takes it a step better, but not good enough. Number five to true diversification. Diverse across multiple sectors, and small, mid, and large caps are represented, and growth and value play a role. So growth stocks and value stocks play a role. Still doesn't go far enough. Number four, diverse across multiple sectors, and small, mid, and large caps are rep represented, and growth and value play a role and also I added on key sentiment and economic data is utilized. Number three takes it a step further but still not far enough. It's diverse across multiple sectors and small mid and large caps are represented. Growth and value play a role and sentiment and economic data is utilized and I added foreign stock ownership when outperformance is clear. Number two on going heading to true diversification. Number two on the list doesn't go quite far enough but it is the best out of the previous ones I have uh, discussed. It's diverse across multiple sectors and small mid and large caps are represented. Growth and value play a role and sentiment and economic data is utilized and foreign stock ownership when out outperformance is clear. And then I added, and defensive options are utilized based on momentum and outperformance. So what is true diversification? And the most important aspect of it all is to have diversification in methods. What does this mean? So let's go back. So number two, you have that entire select, you have that entire criteria that you can follow and then next is the diversification of methods so if you only have one portfolio that ut utilizes one method for ETF and stock selection I use ETFs the zig and the zag of your prof portfolio will not temper the drawdowns so think about this instead of having one portfolio that takes into account the number two. Think about if you have more than one. Think about if you had more than one and they were, let's say you had three like I have. You have three and all three take into account everything in number two 
but they do it differently. So you have three portfolios, three portfolios, all three taking into account everything in number two, but doing it differently, doing it with different methods to allow you to have three portfolios that buffer drawdowns and give you better performance. So here's, here's kind of what I do. I utilize three different methods to make selections for three separate portfolios out of three separate groups of ETFs. Um, I use ETFs. Your goal is to have each of, the, each of them drastically different so when one zigs, the others are zagging. So think about it like this. You have three portfolios. One is hitting a drawdown of 10%. The others are either the other two are either hitting smaller drawdowns or even maybe new highs. So let's get into the performance from the previous week. Here's the performance chart from December 2nd through the end of December 6th. Um, as you see, the bottom uh, numbers show the outperformance. The outperformance, um, I uh, the portfolio did outperform when the S&P 500 was down on 12.2 and 12.3. Uh, my portfolio outperformed. On 12.4, the S&P 500 was up and uh, happily, uh, very happy that my portfolio outperformed it even on that up day. And then the up days on Thursday and Friday, my portfolio lagged in performance, which I kind of expect because my goal is to outperform on down days for the S&P 500 outperform on up or down days on a 15-day rolling 15-day uh, rolling calendar. Um, overall, my portfolio outperformed for the week, and my portfolio did very well for the week. As you can see, the seven selections on the left, um, those were the selections for the week, and they continue to be for this week, the holdings. My portfolio does not, it's designed to not have whipsawing and, and be interchanging on a weekly basis. A lot of these holdings I will hold for multiple, multiple months. Um, the holdings for this week are as follows. VTV, VTV, which is the value portion of the S&P 500. RSP, which is the equal weighted uh, ETF for the S&P 500. EFV is developed market value. Uh, excluding U.S. and Canada. VEA is developed market, excluding USA, USA and Canada. And remember the difference between EFV and VEA. VEA is just developed markets as a whole, and EFV is developed market value only. Uh, QTEC is the NASDAQ 100 technology stocks only ETF. WIZ is the Bull Rider Bear Fighter Index. It copies that uh, index. And MTUM is U.S. Momentum ETF. That is uh, the video for the week, and hopefully you all have a, a great week ahead. And I will uh, see you in the next video.